us to our WhatsApp line. We are live and active. Still sharing, by the way, some interesting facts from Investopedia.com. I hope I got that right. Uh, and this is what it even goes on to say, that having realistic expectations about post-retirement spending habits will help you define the required size of your retirement portfolio. Now, the interesting thing is that most people feel that as they get into retirement, they will be spending much less than what they required before retirement, which apparently is not a really good uh, way to view things, and it's a terrible assumption. And um, this is the part that I really do want to share. It says that people are living longer and want to thrive in retirement. Retirees need more income for a longer time, so they need to save and invest accordingly. Hmm. So when you think about it and you do the math, um, so many of us keep saying, okay, I want to retire at 40, I want to retire at 40. Uh, but then assuming you live to the age, the ripe age of 85 or 90, inshallah, mm. <laughs> God gives you all those years, yes. you have more years out of work than you do in your working life. Yes. So where are you going to need more money? Is it in your working life or is it in your retirement? You've got about 50 years plus if you do leave employment at 40-something, so to speak. Uh, but let me jump in, uh, you know, and, and engage you, Raymond, on this one. You see so many millennials, because you talked about them before, and young people say, ah, by the time I'm 40, I'm done. Yeah. I'm done. Realistic, unrealistic? <laughs> yes. Even studies have shown yeah. that even the savings culture of the mm -hmm. millennials mm -hmm. is, is wanting. Yeah. Uh, I think there was a study last year or two years ago mm -hmm. that they spend uh, close to 90% of what they get yeah. than they save. Okay, yeah. that is just one thing. Then, plus the savings culture generally for the country, mm -hmm. the insurance uptake is 2.7% to 3% oh, wow. for the whole nation. Yeah. If you look at the pension uptake, mm -hmm. it's around 20%. Right. Yeah, okay. that tells you we have an uphill task mm -hmm. to deal with this, this right. issue. And, and, and you know, uh, by the way, uh, when you think about it, Dennis, uh, he's brought up something that's very interesting uh, concerning our culture, even in terms of looking at things like insurance and seeing the benefit. The minute you see that insurance agent in your office or on the street saying, excuse me, you're like, whatever, that's a scam. Yes. I don't need, I don't need any insurance. Yes. <laughs> so, so people really don't see the value of these things. Um, well, it's a, it's a painful reality. Yeah. And, um, I think partly some of these um, sectors are to blame in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, we know as a country we have had, um, we have had a streak of um, uh, malfunctions, especially in the insurance sector. Right. Um, I think around the, the 90s, there was, there, was, there was a big problem in, mm -hmm. in that area. Yeah. Um, but again, these are also commercial sectors. Mm -hmm. They are dynamic and mm -hmm. they, they keep growing as yeah. well. So I would confidently say that um, these sectors have grown and there is no need for the members of the public to continue fearing. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of transparency. There's a lot of transparency, yeah. there's a lot of improvement. Like now, we do have um, a robust uh, insurance regulatory authority, mm -hmm. uh, quite robust. Mm -hmm. We have uh, mm -hmm. a robust uh, retirement benefits authority. Yeah. And the fear that traditionally has been there, mm -hmm. um, that imagination that, look, if I put my money in an insurance company, it will be lost. Mm -hmm. I, I think we need to get over that. Yeah. So you uh, advise yeah. whoever is watching, start considering an insurance policy. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and other platforms, you know, yeah. um, other than pensions, mm -hmm. just in case that uh, someone out there would still want to, uh, to make some planning in the future, mm -hmm. insurance is also a good one, mm -hmm. uh, like life assurance. Yeah. Uh, there is also even, uh, even the circle savings. Mm -hmm. Basically, anything that translates into savings. Yeah. Is good for you mm -hmm. in retirement. Right. Uh, in as much as, of course, we are here to talk about pensions, yeah. but we can't also overlook uh, those other, um, you know, platforms, right. which could potentially achieve yeah. Yeah. Uh, more or less the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but then again, remember, with with pensions, there is a whole there is a whole regulation around it, um, and it it looks into the quality of your life, yeah. your lifestyle, and mm -hmm. the continuity. Yeah. After retirement. Mm -hmm. So, yes, 
there are other platforms and, okay. and, and citizens should be able to look at those other platforms as well. Okay. Um, David, when we actually talk about the longevity of someone's retirement portfolio, something actually stood out for me and that is about the withdrawal rate at which someone operates. You know, they talk about how retirees overspend, tend mm -hmm. to just splurge on doing, you know, all sorts of things. Everything that has been on your bucket list, yeah. you will do it after 60. Yeah. But something that people need to consider is your withdrawal rate when you're at that age. That even the frequency of how you're spending your money, mm -hmm. even in that age, you Check. need to be careful. Yes. Yeah. So basically, I think for, for, for one to enjoy their retirement, of course, they must have that disposable income, mm -hmm. right? That disposable income in most cases will be your pension. Yeah. So as long as your pension can sustain mm -hmm. um, the lifestyle that you wish to live, mm -hmm. I think you should be fine. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it is very hard to state at this point uh, as to how much one yeah. will be spending at retirement. Mm -hmm. But as you s quite correctly say, yeah. is that uh, there are some who will want to get everything off their bucket list yes. that they didn't do when they were younger. Yeah. But to do that, they need money. And for you to be able to do that, mm -hmm. uh, the amount of money you need uh, will be substantial. Right. So if you save early enough, yeah. you will have that money mm -hmm. and enjoy that lifestyle that you wish. Yeah, that, it's, yeah it's interesting how financial planning yeah. follows you even up to your old age. Exactly. <laughs> you have to plan your money even at that age. Yeah, because the days yeah. when uh, retirees were dependent on their children is long over. Yeah. Uh, there, were, there were times, you know, when uh, you retired and uh, you didn't need to worry because your kids were there. Mm -hmm. uh, but those days are over. Are long gone. They are long gone. Okay. So it is up to you to yeah. decide how okay. you're going to do it. All right. Um, when we talk about deductions, taxes, as far as your pension is concerned, can you really tell us in brief about that and what to probably expect? Will you be for sure deducted? Uh, and, and, you know, it's not going to be what you put in is going to come out. As, is, um, yeah. as the law currently stands mm -hmm. is that uh, contributions towards your retirement in a registered retirement benefit mm -hmm. scheme, whatever contributions you make are tax deductible. Yeah. Right? What the law currently says is that you can contribute up to 30% of your monthly salary yeah. or Kenya shillings to 20,000, mm -hmm. whichever is less. Yeah. And that amount of contribution that you make yeah. uh, will first be deducted from your salary mm -hmm. before pay as you earn is uh, calculated. Right. So that is the onus is on the employer mm -hmm. to make those deductions mm -hmm. uh, and give you that tax relief. Yeah. In addition to those uh, contributions being tax deductible, uh, that those contributions will either be with an insurance company or a fund manager mm -hmm. where they are being invested. Yeah. The investment income that is generated by those contributions is not taxable. Mm -hmm. So the money tends to grow faster than putting that money in, let's say, a fixed deposit account. So there are advantages in saving in yeah. the retirement benefits scheme mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. when it comes to taxes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's take a look at another text message that has come in. Um, uh, what do we have there? Joy from Westlands who says, what are the benefits that Dennis and Raymond have realized from saving from their pension fund? And which one is it? Uh, yes, Joy from Westlands. Let me start off with you, uh, Raymond, because now she's actually asking for your testimony. You need testimony, yeah. by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so think about that, Ray. You can actually answer. Joy, let me take a look at another one here that's come in. I'm working for county government. My salary deducted both um, um, uh, Lab Trust and NSSF. Can I get two-way retirement benefits? Okay. Two-way retired uh, benefits, um, you can actually handle that yep. um, uh, when Raymond tells us <laughs> yeah. about uh, your testimony as far as what have you seen that has mm. worked for you with all these retirement funds and so forth. Okay. My, my experience has been with the uh, Octagon Pension, yeah. which is a very stable and uh, transparent uh, pension scheme. Mm -hmm. Uh, where you can save uh, if you're working in the formal sector mm -hmm. as well as have a personal pension scheme yeah. with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I left formal employment about uh, three years ago, yeah. I needed to have some small cash to just manage the transition. Mm -hmm. And it was very easy for me to go to them and you know present myself and they were able to process my, my, my details, my, my dues, yeah. in a very short time mm -hmm. so that I don't get into a financial crisis. Right. Because the reality is when you leave formal employment mm -hmm. and the income stops coming in, yeah. the bills don't stop coming in. Absolutely. So you need uh, a pension scheme that mm -hmm. understands where you are and where, 
where you're going mm -hmm. so that they sort you out very fast right. and help you even in terms of uh, education mm -hmm. to tell you now that you're here mm. this is what you can do yeah this is what you cannot get into absolutely so i was very fortunate to get uh octagon pension mm. yeah. all right uh dennis uh specifically even just talk to those who are especially in the informal sector that's a very tricky space to find yourself when you're trying to meet your daily needs and save at the same time still very possible to plan even when you're informal yes oh uh, <clears throat> I would say it is very possible to plan. Mm. Um, first and foremost, if you are not um, in a formal employment, yeah. uh, well, the advantage of being in that formal employment is that um, the employer has got that registered scheme mm -hmm. uh, wherein there, there are those uh, direct deductions that are made from your, from your, pay, made from your salary. Yeah. Um, but when you are in, in formal sector, yeah. People need to understand that we do have platforms that you can join on mm -hmm. your own. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Including even if you are running a shop, even if you are running a kiosk. Right. There is a platform through which you can join uh, individual pension uh, schemes. Mm -hmm. And um, when you are in that form of employment and your employer has got that, um, that, that scheme, mm -hmm. the percentage is, is fixed. Mm -hmm. Because there is what we call the trust deed and rules, yeah. which says that um, every employee shall shall contribute this percentage, and the employer shall contribute the other percentage. Right. Now, in the informal sector, you don't even need to talk about percentages. Mm -hmm. You just can contribute a figure that you're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. If you can afford 200 shillings, 300 shillings, a thousand shillings, even if you want to make those uh, contributions, say every day. Yeah. Nowadays, we do have uh, even electronic platforms right. through which you can, right. you can remit yeah. uh, th right. those kind of uh, payments. Okay. And um, it is not an excuse. Mm -hmm. It's not an excuse. You know, to just say that I'm in the informal sector and I yeah. can't join a pension, yeah. it is very practicable. All right. Yes. Um, uh, before you actually answer about, you know, ripping from uh, the two-way benefit scheme, let's uh, take uh, James, who's on the line. Good morning, James. James, Hello. Hello? Yes, Karibu Sana to the show. Yes. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, do yes. you have a question or you have a comment? Yes, I just wanted to comment and say mm -hmm. pension is just one way of managing retirement. Okay. Because I think uh, in line with even Vision 2030 and what the government tries to do for the young people, mm -hmm. we should encourage people also to invest towards retirement. Mm -hmm. Instead of looking for a job, because when you tell somebody about pension, although they have tried to say that, you know, you can just be self employed and you can also be contributing. Yeah. It's also important to encourage people mm -hmm. to invest. Yeah. So that at retirement, you have enough funds, mm -hmm. you have enough businesses to take yeah. care of your retired life. Right. Then I also want to correct, um, yes. <laughs> Then the Titan, uh, the, the contributor from, or the, the panelist from Titan, mm. uh, about the locked funds. Yeah. I want to ask you, Shiko. Yeah. <laughs> if you got your money, right, assuming there is 20 million, mm -hmm. or say even 3 million right now that yeah. you could be given from your pension, mm. will, it, will you be able to invest it now and make more money at the moment? Yeah. Or when you are 60? when you can't actually be able you don't have even enough strength. So I think locking that uh, money for mm. most of the youth is not very good. And let me tell you something. Right. A youth who is a spender or let me tell you, someone who doesn't know how to do uh, financial management right yeah. now yeah. will be the same person if you give them at 60. Who so they will know? still spend the same way. So uh, the question of locking is not here nor there. Mm. They should just allow people to get their money, invest when they are young, mm. and then be able to have enough money at okay. the time they retire. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, James. Uh, well said. Okay. Let's take a look at what's up very quickly. 
We've got another text message that has come in. Good morning, Shiko. All I wanted to ask our learned friends, is it true that there is a legislation that once you lose your job, you can access all of your pension funds, not necessarily hitting the retirement age of 50 years? That is Joffrey from Nakuru. You have quite a number of questions uh, to answer, David. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> okay, so do you want to start off with um, James over there who talks about, um, is it true that you can actually access, I think you kind of mentioned something like that in the beginning, mm -hmm. accessibility to your funds even before you hit retirement and that is what you're against. Yeah. The uh, fact well, that you keep pinching, pinching, pinching. No, I mean, I, I, my, my, yeah. my views are based on yeah. making sure that people at retirement are in a decent living yes. by not accessing most of their pension uh, contributions. But before they that. can. They can access. That's what's currently happening. That is what's currently happening. Oh, okay. Right. Right. Um, the question that gentleman asked is yeah. that you could access your retirement savings mm -hmm. before 50 if yeah. you lose your job okay um yeah that i think the what the current law states is that that is not called retirement i mean if you're a member of a scheme and you leave the scheme before <laughs> age 50 mm -hmm. is when this law checks in whereby you can access all your retirement mm -hmm. contributions plus interest yes. and 50 percent of your employers okay you cannot access 50 percent of your employers contributions on your behalf mm -hmm. until you attain the age of 50. Okay. Right. Okay. The other question was uh, the lady who asked, I think it was a lady, yes. who asked whether you could drip from two schemes. Yes. Yes, it is possible to be members, uh, a member of more than one retirement benefit scheme. Mm -hmm. The thing to note here, the tax relief yeah. uh, will be based on the total contributions you make every month. Okay. Uh, so the 30% and 20,000 mm -hmm. Kenyan shillings yeah. tax relief every month will be based on the total contributions rather than mm. on each scheme contribution. Okay. Yeah. What do you have to say about uh, James's comment about uh, it, it not being a good idea mm -hmm. um, to lock someone's funds mm -hmm. until they hit retirement? Because if, if you still don't know in your younger years how yeah. to plan your money, what yeah. makes you think once you jump into retirement, you're going to do something substantial with that? Uh, so a lot of people wouldn't... <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, yeah. it will not be popular, yeah. uh, but I think it has worked in uh, other jurisdictions where these restrictions have been put in place mm -hmm. uh, to the extent that in, mo yeah. in those countries, um, your income at retirement has a direct bearing to your lifetime contributions okay. during your working life. Yes. And you more or less enjoy a lifestyle that is similar, if not the same, as what you are in, uh, enjoying during your working lives. Mm -hmm. So my, my, my argument is based on on that okay yeah um uh, now let me get back to you dennis for a second um, about what you had said earlier on remember when you told us about your experience with your employer the first employer you were with um you know did have a benefit scheme yes. then you ended up with someone who didn't have and then again you got back into <laughs> to yes. someone who who did have in that particular period um what was your experience when you're working for you know a particular company who do not have something going on towards your retirement um in that particular phase or that period uh what really did happen the truth is that when you when you work with an employer who doesn't have um a, a, a scheme mm -hmm. a patient scheme in place uh there is always the uncertainty that keeps running in you mm -hmm. and uh, it is also a fact yeah given an opportunity to choose between two employers mm -hmm. maybe at the same pay but one has a scheme and the other does not have yeah the one that does not have the scheme is likely to be less attractive to you mm -hmm. particularly if at least you've got the idea of what pension is all about right um so uh, during uh, those moments when you're working with that employee who doesn't have a scheme, mm -hmm. the employees are normally not very settled. Mm -hmm. Because okay. remember there is also uh, the fact that they are also interacting with other people yeah. in other institutions. Mm -hmm. And they are hearing all these uh, stories about uh, the pension schemes in right. with these other employers. Yeah. So, Usually you're very unsettled. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, before we start to wind down, I want to take a look at one last text message and then jump into our final part. Uh, before we say Kwaheri, Andrew from Chemelil says, Good morning there, K24. Please ask the panel to clarify for me if planning for retirement um, applies only to the working class in the formal sector or also to informal sectors because our workforce is high in informal sectors. Oh, we did kind of touch on that, but yeah. uh, let's get uh, your opinion on that, Raymond. What would you like to tell Andrew? 
I think retirement planning uh, applies for both formal and informal sector. Yeah. As uh, my colleague uh, Dennis said, mm -hmm. there are even uh, digital, digital platforms nowadays through which you can contribute as an individual, yeah. even on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. I'm aware that Octagon Pension has one called Boykiza, yeah. where you can contribute uh, via an app even yeah. on a daily basis so mm -hmm. that you ensure that uh, your pensions are taken care of. Right. So it applies both ways. Okay. Yes. Now, 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 now. Here is the big question, um, if you ask me, David. First of all, is it legal to have companies, corporates, you name it, employers, not having a scheme for their employees? Too many people today go to work, but there is nothing being remitted. Forget about even health, because NHIF is also another monster on its own. Yeah. But when it comes even to NSSF, mm. what is supposed to be, you know, a requirement mm -hmm. is not being remitted. Yep. Uh, what about that? Well, yeah. um, I think the, there are laws that govern remittance of uh, contributions mm. for both NSSF and pensions. Yeah. And... Uh, with regards to pensions, uh, contributions to, towards your retirement benefit, once mm -hmm. deducted from your salary, mm -hmm. are supposed to be remitted yeah. by the 10th of the following month. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Absence of that will yeah. uh, basically uh, make those contributions accrue interest. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the Retirement Benefits Authority, yeah. uh, the regulator for retirement benefit scheme, uh, basically has to... Um, receives from uh, all administrators in the market yeah. uh, um, uh, on a monthly basis mm -hmm. the remittances of the schemes under every administrator's right. uh, ambit. So mm -hmm. uh, it, these things are monitored yeah. um, for, for registered schemes. Mm -hmm. They are monitored and in the absence of those remittances yeah. the regulator is there to take action. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, do you have something to say about yeah. that? Because we also have quite a number of employees who are frustrated mm -hmm. only to find out at the end of the day by the way their boss or whoever was not remitting that money. Yeah. Yes, I think just to add to what David has said, yeah. um, uh, first of all, in terms of uh, the legality of mm -hmm. whether there's a scheme or not, yes. um, unfortunately, the law does, is not compulsory mm -hmm. that an employer must have a pension scheme. Mm -hmm. um, the only one that is compulsory is the NSSF, the yeah. statutory one. Mm -hmm. If you're more than five employees. If you're more mm -hmm. than five employees. Mm -hmm. um, now, for the others. Yeah. There is, it's not compulsory in law. Mm -hmm. It's not a legal requirement. Yeah. It is basically um, perhaps out of the market forces of you know, competition and, and all that. Yeah. But it will become very um, uncompetitive for you as an employer mm -hmm. if you do not have this kind of a scheme in place. All right. Okay. Yes. Okay. Because it's supposed to be part of a package or a, a package. benefit for the an, employees. An attraction. An attraction. Yes. So, so you wouldn't have a case at the end of the day? You wouldn't have a case. So if if your employer does not have a scheme, you wouldn't have a case. Right. Provided yeah. uh, your employer participates in the NSSF, which is the statutory. And if they fail to do the NSSF? Now, if they fail to do the, the NSSF yeah. and whatever, even the one that is already in place, mm -hmm. where they uh, say they are making deductions but not remitting, yeah. there, are some, there are certain penalties that are payable mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, to the Retirement Benefits Authority. Yeah. The law also envisages that when you default, you are supposed to pay with certain interests. Mm -hmm. Right. How can employees go about reporting such cases? I, I think David would, would be best place yeah. to answer that, but uh, yeah. I can still make an attempt. Okay. RBA is, is a public entity, mm -hmm. and uh, being a regulator, mm -hmm. it, is, it is basically open to this kind of complaints. Yeah. And I, I know for sure, if mm -hmm. you make a, a formal complaint to the RBA and mm -hmm. say that... Um, one, two, three things are not happening yeah. uh, in, in our scheme. Mm -hmm. um, the RBA should be able to take uh, appropriate action on that. Right. Because at the end of the day, it's actually the RBA mm -hmm. that, is responsible to, that is responsible for ensuring that uh, employers are compliant. Mm -hmm. So they are the ones to keep them in check. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, as we start to wind down, um, Raymond, let me leave you with this one um, uh, about just talking about the dangers of not planning for your retirement or for your old age um, and why we really, really need to see the seriousness or the gravity of the seriousness behind this particular discussion. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I think it's important to note whether you are a youthful person or aged. 
is that we are competing against many things. One, we are competing against uh, mm -hmm. depreciation of our health and energy mm -hmm. against time. Yeah. And now with the world today, we are competing also against technology. These are factors that affect our income, our productivity, and our lifestyle as well. Yeah. So you cannot ignore saving for retirement. Yeah. Yeah. But oh, uh, yeah. what I think needs to be made very clear mm -hmm. is that all stakeholders, the, the private practitioners, yes. the interest groups, the employers mm -hmm. and everyone, need to paint a picture. Like I will tell you in my formal employment, mm -hmm. we, used to, we used to have uh, what is called financial management uh, training. Yes where you are told how to manage your finances during mm -hmm. employment, you're informed about uh, pension schemes and savings and all that. Mm -hmm. But with the informal sector, yeah. where there is a, it's not very structured currently, mm -hmm. I think the stakeholders need to go out right. and give more information and mm -hmm. educate the public yeah. why this is very important. Okay, and yeah. I think uh, we pass the mantle over to you, David. What are you doing to play your part in... Um, you know, getting the public out there to see the importance of pensions or to plan for their retirement? Yeah, well, we at, at Saiton mm -hmm. um, have what we refer to as, uh, we have trainings mm -hmm. uh, that we normally have for members of the public. Yes. Um, we have two trainings um, every week, I think on Thursday and Saturday. Mm -hmm. And we normally invite members of the public to come yeah. and uh, be trained on various aspects of mm -hmm. financial services, one mm -hmm. of them being retirement benefits. Right. So I believe we are playing our part in that uh, particular space mm -hmm. and we'll continue to do so. Yeah, and I suppose anyway, um, it's, it's upon each and every one of us. It's like your personal responsibility yes. you know, to, to, to make sure that your future is secure. Exactly. Okay. And so with that, we bring this conversation to an end. We really do want to thank our panelists this morning for making time. David Mwakitele, Head of Pensions at Saiton Investments. You had it for yourself. Raymond Mador, an entrepreneur. Thanks a lot for sharing your story. Dennis Kimakia, Managing Partner at Kimakia Magara and Partners, Asante Sana, uh, for also talking to us this morning. Should you want to be in touch with any of them, why don't you let us know? You can also hit me up on my personal account and I will be able to link you up either with David, Raymond, Dennis as far as your retirement plans are concerned. If you also enjoyed this conversation, why don't you let us know. On behalf of Paul Mungalambuvi, Jeff Morten, myself Shiko Kaitani and the entire breakfast crew, thanks a lot for watching. God bless. We'll see you bright and early tomorrow from 9am. The Daily Brief is up next.